It's winter, it's Norway, and it's the most beautiful weather you've ever seen. Let's take you on an unforgettable journey. This is the new MIM Lion Coach. Welcome to Northern Norway. Today we are in Sommarøy, and in direct translation to English, it's called the Summer Island. So now let's take a MIN Lion Coach out on this icy Norwegian rose to test drive it and give it a good go on this hard, hard condition, but still in beautiful weather. Welcome to Northern Norway. Welcome on board to this MIN Lion Coach. Today we are not driving a demo coach. Today we are driving a customer owned bus which is running here in the north of Tromsø. We are all the way up in northern Norway. It's beautiful scenery around us and today we are going to have a great test drive on bad roads with a great bus in a great conditions with perfect scenery. So now before we start driving, I just want to show you a little bit of how we can set the driver's position. To my left, I have a button so I can adjust the steering wheel. And as you can see, it's not a lot to adjust. So I could really enjoy getting a bigger um, possibility to change the steering wheel a lot more. And it only allows you a couple of seconds to actually change if you don't hold the button down physically. Okay. I find my uh, good spot for the steering wheel. If you want to use, you also have armrests over here. And when you are starting this bus, you can start by doing the ignition key, but don't take it all the way because here you also have an ignition button. So push the brake and hold the button. And then we are starting. As I can see here in front, I have a great panel. To my right, I have a speedometer with a watch and also the kilometers how far the bus have been rolling and to my left we can see the trip counter the rpm meter and also i can see the temperature under that i can see how much fuel i have left how hot the temperature is in the engine and also how much air i do have in the different sources so i do have great view here in the front so let's start the coach by putting the transmission to drive release the handbrake off we go join us for this wonderful bus test in the north of Norway, this is Somare. My first impression of this MIN Lion coach is very, very smooth and comfortable. It's a very good built coach and I sit very comfortable here. And what amazes me is how quiet the coach is. It's almost no sounds, even though we are driving on very bad roads with a lot of bumps. It could have been a lot more shakiness in this coach, but it's very clean and quiet. And you can almost not hear the engine at all. They have done a really great job to isolate this coach. In the rear of this coach, we do have the D26 engine from MIN. It holds 510 powerful horsepowers and gives a lot of torque when you're driving. It's a really powerful engine, still very quiet, but it's efficient and I really like how it is to work with. And it also keeps the fuel consumption quite low, so you're not using way too much while driving. Connected with the engine, we do have the Tipmatic 12-speed uh, transmission also comfortable to use. For me personally, I think this is too slow to work with in these kind of conditions. Here it's uphill, it's downhill, and if you push the throttle, it takes really long time for the transmission to actually work. And this can also be a big problem in the winter because you need 
the effect from the engine. If you start losing effect from the engine and start shifting down, you might also lose too much speed. And when you start accelerating again, you might not get any grip and you might get stuck in a hill. And that's very, very bad. And I feel this transmission is a bit too slow. So the way to get around that is to push this button and use the transmission completely manually. There is also an alternative for this transmission. You can also use the ZF Ecolife Coach. That's a six step automatic transmission with a faster acceleration, but Bussing chose to have the 12 step because of all the conditions here with much hills, a lot of climbing. <music> When I'm driving on a straight flat road it's absolutely great to use this transmission and it's great also to use this steering wheel. The steering is wonderful, I love how it handles the road and the suspension here is also wonderful. It's like floating around over here and when you look in the scenery it's, yeah, yeah, it's a great combination for a test drive here today. All right, we have the multimedia system. Here we have a screen, which now is a radio, but if I put it to reverse, we have the reverse camera. Here is also the buttons for the doors. Under, we have the box for all the destinations. And we also have the system for DVD and multimedia. And try to play a DVD in this coach. It's not easy. We were four people once trying to start it up and none of us could make it. And we were quite young and technological persons. It's impossible to try to start a DVD in one of these coaches. And why should it be rocket science to start a DVD? It should be inserting it and press play. And then my second question, why do we still use DVD? We are in 2023. We have a lot of different sources to get video on screen. Let's skip the DVD and start producing systems that actually work. It should not be any harder. We are making great coaches, but we still have no idea how to install multimedia functions in a coach. Continue here, we do have the transmission switch on a turning switch on my right knee. Here we have some lightning options. We only have two buttons for lightning options, but you will see that later how good the lightning will be on board. Here we have the climate system on my steering wheel. To my right, we have the cruise controllers. And to my left, I can control the driver computer in the middle. The display is very easy, nice to work with. I like the controllers. You know this from the Neoplan coaches and from the MIN coaches, also from the city buses. This is very good dashboard and it implements in all kinds of vehicles from MIN. To my left, I have some functional buttons. I can lower and rise up the bus. And I also have the light switch here to my left. And here I do have a 360 cam. So when I reverse the coach, this will turn on and I will see all edges. It should eliminate the possibility to, to make some small scratches on this coach. To my left for the steering wheel, we have the blinkers. We can also use the window wipers. To my right, we have the retarder. And here it's not a physical retarder. You have like up and down. If you want to release the retarder, if you are, for example, on step number four, just push the button and you are rolling again freely. And if you push it when you're just driving like I'm doing now, it will go all the way down to maximum. Also, the brake pedal has a function. If I will push it a little bit now, it will keep the speed down the whole hill. So I don't have to think of over speeding down the whole hill. Welcome to my tech talk. Behind me, we have a real masterpiece of a coach. This is the coach of the year. And there are so many reasons that this coach deserve the title coach of the year. And come with me. Let's take a look on all the details on the coach. I really like the design of this Lion Coach because you have the masculine design on it. You have a little bit round curves here, but you can see on the details that you have the MAN logo in the lights. And on top here, you have the typical design on the MAN Coach and also the MAN Lion City. You have the lion 
in the center. And you also have the MN logo on the front where you have the black panel. When you take a look at the rest of the front, you can see the front window is huge and you see the electric heated front window all the way down. I have seen on different other coaches that it stops like here, but here you have it all the way down and I like that. You have also big lights on the roof and this is a Scandinavian spec on this bus. So you have extra heating, your extra isolation and you have the lights on the roof. You can see they have the black panel here. So you have this continue of the front window all the way down here. On this one, you have the analog mirrors. And as you know, we can have the digital mirror as an option, but this one has the analog and I like it. I have 100% control over the bus. I can see exactly what I want. So for me, this is the best solution. You can see that the detail here, the line goes from here all the way on the door and up. And you have the silver details that make this bus more masculine. And here you have the door. And I like this because you have the handle on this side. You also have it on this side. And it's, yeah, it's quite good. But I have to mention this, the door is very slow. It's open slowly, closed slowly. And you know, you cannot move the bus before it's completely closed. Hidden behind this flap, you have the diesel tank. It's easy to access, but you have to close the door before you can refill the fuel on the bus. And you need to use your key to open the tank. That is a protection, so they cannot steal your fuel. I really like this line on the, on the coach because you are separated the lower part from the top part. But if you see on the door, they don't have this design on the door. And it's maybe because it's cheaper to build a door like this. But I miss this line. It's like they are cutting the bus in two. So let's open the luggage compartment. On this one, you have manual flaps, but you have a huge space. So I think you have space enough for all the luggage you need, but it's maximum 850 kilo luggage on this one. And that's a little bit lower than I expected on a three axle bus. Here you have all the fuses, electronic system, but I expected it to be on the other side because this side, you need all the space you can have for the luggage. So to have this box, that takes around one cubic meter with luggage space. It's not the best solution. This is a flap that you normally don't open, but when you need to refill the water tank, it's easy to access and it's quite easy to refill the tank. You don't need a special tool or special connection. It's quite easy as you can see here. Right behind the middle door, you have an extra flap and normally in the coaches, you have uh, the sleeping cabin for the driver, but in this one, you have space for your own um, equipment that you need. You have the vacuum cleaner and you have some equipment that you maybe need on the road. But we have to close it if you want to open the back door. As you can see, the middle door is wide, easy access. You have the handles and you also have the toilet here. You can easily access if you need to get a vacuum cleaner from this side. This coach don't have the extra heater in the floor as we expected. We know that drivers in this area, they ask for it. On the intercity coach I'm taking from my city into Oslo, they have it. But it makes a lot of noise, this electric fan. And every fifth minute it starts and stops. And if you want to relax and maybe sleep on the coach, it's disturbing you. How many times have you been standing at the bus stop and cannot see anything when you are outside the coach? On this one, you have lights all the way around, so you can easily see where people are and where the luggage is. So, you want to know how this looks in the night? And this is how it looks like in the dark. I have said it so many times that I don't like to have the ad blue in the back and the diesel tank in the front. It should be connected close to each other. But I understand why they do it, because if you have it close to the engine, you don't need to run the return circle pump all the time after you have been driving the bus. So it's shorter distance for the add blue to go back to the tank again. So, but then maybe they should also move the diesel tank to another place. This is the heart of the bus. This is a D26 engine with 510 horsepower, a lot of torque and connected to the Tipmatic gearbox. It's a 12 speed automatic manual gearbox. You have easy access to every service point that you need. It's easy to change the belt. It's easy to check the oil levels, the cooling systems, the air filter. The water pump on the D26 is with a clutch. It means that you, when you need a circulation of cooling, it starts. And when you don't need it to preheat the engine, then you disconnect it. So the engine can get the right temperature as soon as possible. And then it starts circulate in the rest of the coach. 
as you can see on this coach, we have a lot of luggage capacity. And one other thing, that you have a, a separate water tank that you can remove so you can easily fill it up and go back again to coach. You don't have to take the coach all the way where you can fill the water. You can also take it out and do it. It's so freezing cold here, so let's go inside again and continue our driving in this amazing area. At the moment, I'm driving on a very, very bad road. It's bumps after bumps, and they are really pushing the limits to the coach, but it's still very comfortable. I'm seated very comfortable in my seat, and there is no big sounds. It's not any smashes, and you never hit the ground with the bus. It's really, really good suspensions in this coach, and I'm amazed how good they work. And I feel safe by driving on this kind of conditions. There is no problems, you don't feel like you're tilting over. It's a great vision from my seat. Big window, and I love the window here to the left. I can see absolutely everything I need. Great view out the front door. The mirrors are easy to use. Big standing mirrors down and wide angle mirrors on top and they are very functional. I see all my corners and in addition with a 360 camera here to my left. The entrance, I think it's a little bit narrow. I would like to have it a little bit wider and there's also some edges and this guide seat sticks out a little bit and it's a little bit in the way if we're coming in here with some bigger bags or some big jackets. We are here in the winter time we will use big jackets so i would probably one day in the future like am i to build a little bit wider entrance door it's nowhere a guide can place a cup but they do have some buttons they can turn on a reading light and they can also adjust some of the heat so they do have a little bit but there is no way they can place a cup but they have free access to the fridge <laughs> so if they have something there they can just grab whatever they have to the right there is also a closet the driver can store different kind of things there or the guide can use that as a compartment for itself <laughs> So here we are in the passenger compartment of this coach. Here we have 55 comfortable seats and look at the lightning. We waited to shoot this just to get it in dark and outside it's pitch black. We actually even have some northern lights above the bus. But now inside here we could actually host a TV show. This lightning is absolutely wonderful. Here we do have the overhead compartments and you have great accessibility to leave your stuff. But here in the front, we do have the air condition system. So it takes away a little bit of the space. But otherwise you can store your children's seats and also washing equipment. Other than that, I've heard some feedbacks from the drivers. They would like to have a little bit more of the locked boxes so they can actually store more of soap and things they can clean the bus with. So now they're just storing it here like paper towels. As you can see, there is two uh, TV screens in the bus. It's one in the front, one in the back. The seats looks very inviting. They have this adjustable neck rest. So it's very welcoming and the seats looks nice. You have your armrests here, everything you need for a long bus ride. Now I'm taking a seat in the coach. I will fasten my seat belt, rise up my armrest. Here we also have a footrest. I do have USB cables or USB chargers between each seat. I have a little table, handles, curtains I can close. I can turn on a light. Here I do have everything. And I'm also surprised how much space I have between the seats. And one thing with this coach as well, it's totally flat floor. So there is no middle aisle that's lowered here in this coach. So that means also that there is one extra step to come into this coach here in the middle door. But that I don't think matter that much. For me, I like it better to have the lowered aisle because then it's easier to clean. Because when I'm this tall that I am, I need to really bend down to reach the floor with a mop. And I really feel some ache in my back after washing. And also these shelves are sticking a little bit out more than I'm used to. So I'm also hitting my head in the overhead compartment. And I don't do that in other coaches. And there is also a little 
tiny, small, stupid problem. Maybe I'm the only one in the world that noticed it. But when I'm using the mop and getting stuck under the radiator, I don't get out again. Here we also have a toilet. And here we can also see that we have a great uh, screen in the front. We have the logo, you have the temperature, you have the clock. It looks very nice. But I also like how it looks while we're driving. This is how the lightning will be while driving. Blue. the pedals are nice to use and when I release the pedal it will actually go down in the eco mode so it goes down to 500 rpm or something so it's really economic to drive and if you also use the cruise controller then it will also go quite often into the eco mode if you want to come into eco mode by just driving regularly you have to keep the foot away from the throttle for a while but if you're using the cruise controller then the eco mode will kick in quite often of course, it helps you save fuel, and I think this coach is very fuel efficient. There is competitors that use a lot, lot more than the MIN coach, so this is also a very nice operation for the bus owner, the bus company. This coach is one out of four brand new MIN coaches to the north of Norway, and this is the first time it's delivered four brand new coaches for north of Norway because they didn't have any service points above Trøndelag, that's in the middle of Norway. And now we are almost on top of Norway. And now MIN is cooperating with Team Værsted to make a good cooperation so they can make service for these kind of coaches. So this is the first, yeah, I will call it a big delivery for MIN coaches in the north of Norway. And I'm sure it's not the last because now they open up with a big new service net. Now it's possible for other customers also to buy this brand in the north of Norway. Busring is based in Tromsø and in that city it's a lot of hills, a lot of corners, a lot of small roads and you really need to use the steering wheel a lot. You have roundabouts, you have tunnels, you have tunnels and roundabouts. Steering is very important when you're driving city sightseeing or city traffic in Tromsø. Steering is then important to make your day as a driver comfortable. For me, driving this coach on the road is very, very smooth and nice. But when I come to the city center, I would like the steering to become a little bit easier. I feel I'm using a little bit of my body to come around the corner. And when you're doing that 10 hours a day, you will feel it in your shoulders after a while. It's something you will get used to, but I do think that will be a little bit easier if the steering wheel was a bit easier to handle, especially in low speeds in city driving. Volvo have had dynamic steering for several years. Now recently Daimler even introduced dynamic steering to their vehicles. So I'm excited to see when Emma N will give us a dynamic steering in the future. I've been using this coach now the whole day and I'm really starting to fall in love. This is a little love story. You're coming into the coach, you have expectations. You really hope that you will get a great day in the nature with a beautiful vehicle and everything you're hoping for is coming true. The coach is wonderful to drive, it's comfortable, it's silent and it also took us out in one of the most scenic places we do have here in Norway. I'm thrilled about this coach and I think it's a great product. So the title this coach got some years ago, the coach of the year, is well deserved. But of course there will always be some improvements to make with the coach and this coach has no exceptions. I would like to get a little lighter steering for city traffic and I also would like to see a transmission that actually handles the North Norwegian road conditions. It's hilly, it's up and down, so you climb everywhere. I would love to see a transmission that handles that better. I will not risk to get stuck in a hill just because the transmission is slow and thinking, hmm, what to do next? Maybe a little bit wider entrance for the passenger would have been nice. And like Tom also said, try to keep the AdBlue and diesel tank connect together. Other than that, it's a dream to drive. Like I said, I'm in love. Thank you so much for watching the video here today. And if you like what you see, please click down here. The button is called subscribe, and then you will see all the future videos here on Bus Magazine. Until next time, 
drive safely and have a great day.